Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and today we are going to make yet another one layer cake quilt. So let me grab the layer cake here. I found this at the quilt shop the other day and fell in love with it. It's so pretty. Look at these pretties. Can you see them? Oh, they're so beautiful and they're so soft. I love this. I want to make a quilt, I think for my son, out of this. So this layer cake is called Lakeside Gatherings Flannels by Primitive Gatherings. It's by Moda. It's a little spendy, a little pricey, which is partially why I only bought one. Usually I buy two layer cakes and I'll do a sample and work out all the kinks. I didn't do that with this one. So I'm sewing by the seat of my pants. We're gonna be making a four patch quilt and I'm gonna show you a really fun way, an easy way to make four patches, especially when you're using a layer cake. It's my favorite way. It's a very simple quilt, beginner friendly. You can do this if you're a beginner. Let's get started looking at the fabric and coming up with a plan. Okay, we're gonna try this two camera thing. I don't know how it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. All right, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna see what we can see. All right, oh, these are so pretty. I'm gonna separate these into lights, darks, and mediums. And here's a really good tip when you're doing this. I've showed this a million times how to use the Ruby Beholder and how to use a black and white photo and all of that wonderful stuff. But another tip is to actually go online and look at the packet of fabric that you're buying. You can change it then into black and white and see the values and then figure out if it's something you want to maybe pursue because sometimes they're all light, sometimes they're all darks a lot of times there's a mix but sometimes there just aren't and this will give you an idea before you purchase if it's going to work or if it's going to be something you like on the screen you can see that i did that with this it's going to make things easier and i have it up on my phone right now so i can look and kind of use it as a cheat sheet uh, for what i'm going to separate makes it a little easier let's separate it out okay i have these separated into the three groups so i have my lights mediums and darks now i have 16 lights i need 21 lights and i have 10 darks and i need 21 darks so we have to take these mediums and split them to get these up to 21 and that's okay because we're just going to make sure that we never put a medium by a medium so if we have these two here we're going to make sure that we never have these two together when we're making our four patches which will make sense in a minute i'm going to take these and split them between the two so we get 21 in each pile and make sure it's even now i do see there's a lot of these blues i might take all the blues and put them over into the dark pile because that'll make this whole Thing pop I think so I'm gonna sort these out make sure I have 21 in each and I'll meet you back here well that's a little unfortunate because I have all my blues over here except for these really really light blues I need just one more over on this side so I'm gonna have to go into a beige which I am I'm gonna do I think this one oh well it's gonna turn out it's gonna turn out I'm gonna trust the process it just looks weird so I have 21 in each pile so this fabric is really interesting because it isn't like a traditional flannel. There's something like, I don't know, some sort of stabilizer it feels like on the back. I did a little research and this is cotton. I don't know if it's infused, but usually flannels are really hard to work with because they can fray a lot. And I don't know if they did this to stabilize it and to make it less of a problem. It also doesn't have as much stretch that we sometimes see with flannels, which is kind of nice. I mean, I'm actually really loving this. So we're gonna start building our blocks with this. I'm so excited, look how pretty. And I'm gonna show you our next steps. Okay, so our next step is to make our four patches and we're gonna make them in a unique way. But before we do that, I'm gonna take all of my mediums that I have on this pile that I moved over and I'm gonna put them on the bottom. It's gonna make this process a little bit easier uh, so we have a nice variety. So now I'm going to take one at a time and I'm gonna place them right sides together, making sure that I don't have two mediums together, which I don't. And we're gonna just sew up both sides here. Now, normally when I'm working with flannel, I use a wider seam allowance instead of the quarter inch. I will go to a three eighths, which I think it's what they use in clothing. Maybe it's five eighths, I don't know. Three eighths is what I use, so I move it over a little bit because of the fraying. Debating because of this thing on the back on whether to do that. But you know what, I think I'm gonna do it just in case there's some fraying involved because we, we don't want this to fray out. I'm gonna just take and sew down both sides of this. So I'm making a tube and I'm gonna use contrasting thread so you can see it and then uh, we will do the next step. And you know what, before I do that though, I think I am gonna use a dark blue because I, want, I really want you to see this process. Mm, let's see, let's get a darker one. All right, 
let's see. No, we're not doing that one. Let's do this one. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do these two. So we're gonna do it this way. And I'm gonna sew, use the side, 3 eighths of an inch all the way down both sides. Okay, so you can see how I sewed down both sides and I used a black thread. The next step is to set the seam. So we're gonna press it right on top because that's going to allow that to relax. I always set my seams. Some people don't, that's okay. But for me, it just makes a crisper, nicer look. I love steam. I think it really helps with the pressing. Not everybody feels that way. That's okay. Everybody has their own preferences. I've never had a problem with shrinkage or anything like that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, all right, so now is our next step to cut. So I'm gonna lay my ruler down on the five inch line, which that's not right, because that's, make sure you don't put the half inch, if you have half inches on your ruler, you wanna make sure it's the whole five inch. You can kind of see when you're putting it on there. And we're gonna cut right down at that five inch mark. Just like that. Next, we're gonna press to the dark side. I like to finger press it, and then press it with the iron. And I'm just going back and forth on top, using a little bit of steam. You can see my squares weren't exactly straight. That's okay, we're gonna trim it up. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Press to the dark, using a smidge of steam. Gets it nice and crisp, lets those fibers relax, just like a spa. All right, next I'm going to lay the navy against the off-white and the off-white against the navy. So I'm taking the darks and putting them against the lights and the lights against the darks, and I'm putting them facing together. Now, since we press to the dark side, they're gonna nest really nicely, Real nice in there, look at that. And our next step is to sew down these sides, making sure that they're nice and nested in there. In fact, I'm gonna put some pins in this because I think that'll help. I'm just putting them back here just to hold everything together. Okay, I'm gonna sew down on both sides and I'll meet you back here for the next step. All right, take those pins out, press it to set those seams, nice steam. Get them nice and flat and happy. And now we're gonna see our four patches. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. So now we are, again, we're working with a 10 inch square going this way. So all we're going to do is move in five inches again from that edge and line it up nice and straight. I like to use that sew line as a guide. That looks pretty good. Remember we were a little off down here, so we're gonna be a little off but not bad. All right, and then I'm gonna cut and we're gonna have four patches. What do like, you see? Oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna peek inside. Look at that. Look at that. We now have a four patch and it's pretty on. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna press these because this is exciting. Doesn't matter which side you press it to. If you wanna even press it open, that's okay. And we have two four patches. Oh my goodness. Look at that, two of the blocks are already done. We're gonna do that with the rest of these, matching them up, sewing down the sides, although I am going to use a neutral thread. I have this blue that I'm going to use. I like to use matching thread or sort of matching thread whenever I can. Then I will meet you at the design board already. Oh wait, no, we gotta trim them up. We're gonna, we're gonna trim them up and then I'll meet you at the design board and we'll put them all together. Actually, you know what? We're gonna trim them up right now because why not, right? So to trim these up, they need to be nine by nine, okay? So I am going to lay my ruler. So it is at four and a half because that's half of nine by nine. So I'm making sure that it's four and a half. Oops, I was like, that's off, that's wrong. What was I gonna do, but it's right. <laughs> It's four and a half mark here and four and a half mark here. Now you notice it hangs over the nine inch line. That's okay, in fact, that's really good. So we're gonna hold this in place. Just make sure that I'm at four and a half, four and a half. And we're gonna cut this edge and this edge. Close your blade and pull away. 
before you move anything. Okay, so that's that's the waist for that one side. Not bad. Then I'm going to take this upper right corner and I'm going to turn it to my lower left corner and I'm going to now lay the nine inch line on that edge and this should be four and a half which it is and four and a half look at that and we're going to trim the other two sides pull it away close your blade and there you have it nine by nine four patch okay I'm going to do it to all of them I'll meet you at the design board. We're gonna put this all together. So easy, so fast, so much fun. Let's go. Okay, before we go to the design wall and all of that, it's the next day. Put together a little bit better than it was yesterday. And I wanted to show you that I'm getting ready to sew these. These are all together and I pinned them. And what I did was I pinned in from the edge so the pins aren't gonna be in the seam allowance. This is just gonna stabilize them as I run them through the machine and I'm gonna chain piece them. So I have the stack here, I'm gonna run them through the machine. Nice, easy, quick quilt. One thing that happened, however, and you know, it's crazy, because as I was counting the pieces, I thought, gosh, there seems to be an extra one. There was one extra, there is. So I got a bonus piece. <laughs> this is uh, supposed to be a 42 pack of 10 inch squares. And I got 43. Now I chose to pull this one out, even though this was the top one on the pack and I really loved it, but look at how crooked it is. And that sometimes happens, you know, sometimes they get cut crooked. This would have really bugged me in the quilt. So I pulled this one out. Maybe I'll use it to make the label or something and straighten it up. It happens, it happens. All right, so I'm gonna run these through the machine, chain piece them through, and then I will cut them and sew them again and meet you back here at the design wall for sure this time. Okay, so it's up here on the design board. Now my design board's not big enough for them all, so I have the rest here. But this will give you a good idea of the layout that I'm thinking. So I'm gonna do the dark blues going this row, diagonal, and then light, and then dark, then light, and just keep alternating. I love this. And this quilt didn't produce a lot of waste. I actually have the waist here. This is all of the waist from this quilt. Isn't this great? Now I did play with some other layouts, but I came up with this one. I like this one the best. I did try it on point, which means that I turn the block like this, and you can see a picture of that layout here. I love this, but there's going to be a lot of waste and I didn't want that to happen. Also, it's gonna be a much smaller quilt. So this one will be about 50 by 60 which is a nice size quilt for like on a couch. And if I did it on point, here's my paper <laughs> written up. You can see I would have had to cut off all of these edges, these points to square it up. And it would have been, I think 48 by 48. So it would have been a lot smaller. I could have also purchased some fabric and used it as cornerstones, which I still might do, I don't know. You tell me, what do you think? Should I leave this layout and just make a nice big size quilt? Should I buy extra fabric? Should I, which I do, which I do. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, let's see if I can find the block. Is it this one? Maybe it is this one. No, it's this one, hold on, I'll grab it. I ended up having to make a, another block using that extra piece because a little dog whose name rhymes with schmazy, or better yet, crazy, got a hold of one of the blocks and chewed a hole in it. Yeah, so I had to use the pieces and make another one. Oh, this dog. Anyway, I love her, I love her, but ooh, she's a handful. I hope you give this a try and let me know. I'm all over the place under So The Distance on Instagram, Facebook. I have a website, I have an email, I have all of it. So you can definitely reach out to me on any of those. I wanna see pictures if you do make this. It's so much fun and so easy and so quick and so wonderful, <laughs> at least in my opinion. I love making four patches this way. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew. I hope a puppy doesn't get a hold of your quilt box. And I will see you real soon. Bye.